In this Inkscape lesson, we'll use some special features of the pen tool and the mirror symmetry path effect to draw a flaming skull. Before we begin, if you would like to learn much more about Inkscape's many tools and features, as well as how to use them in realistic projects, I have two full Inkscape courses available, Inkscape Deep Dive Beginner to Master and Inkscape Hyperdrive Master the Fundamentals. I'll leave links to these courses and more in the description below in case you would like to check them out. Okay, to start, let's first switch to the Squares and Rectangles tool by pressing the R key. Let's create a rectangle here that we'll use as the background. And let's make it black. Okay, because we're going to use mirror symmetry, we only need to draw half of the skull. So let's switch to the Pen tool by pressing the B key. And let's create a path for the left side of the skull. Let's draw it outside of the background for now so we'll be able to see it better. Now we can bring it back up here and click the first point again to close off the path. Let's give this a white fill. Let's turn off the stroke by holding shift and clicking this red X here. Now let's switch to the select tool with the S key and move the path onto the background. In order to do mirror symmetry on multiple objects at once, the objects all have to be within a group that has mirror symmetry applied to it. So let's first group this path by pressing Ctrl G. Let's open the path effects dialog by going to path, path effects. Click this plus button down here. Then click Mirror Symmetry here. And all we want to do in here is check the Fuse Paths option, which will cause parts of the mirrored paths to fuse together when they're touching. We can see this if we double click the group to enter it, select this path here, switch to the Node tool by pressing the N key, and move this top node to the right. Now they appear to be one path. Alright, let's adjust the other nodes and the curves until we have what we're looking for. That should work. We can go ahead and close out the path effects dialog now. Next, let's create some eyes by first switching to the circles and ellipses tool with the E key and creating an ellipse in here. And let's make it black. Now we can turn it into a path by going to path, object to path, then switch to the node tool and adjust the shape some. And as you can see, sometimes objects will mysteriously disappear from the other side, but as soon as we adjust something like a node, it will reappear. Okay, now let's switch to the pen tool with the B key and create a path for the nose. Let's turn off the stroke and make the fill black, then adjust it with the node tool. Okay, if we go back to the pen tool, we have these options up here under shape. The triangle in, triangle out, and ellipse options are all good for creating line art. For example, let's select triangle in, zoom in some by holding control and scrolling up the mouse wheel, and create a path here above the eye. And we might have to increase the scale value up here some. Now we can see that this creates a path with a triangle shape, starting out thick and tapering off to a point. And we can still adjust the original nodes of the path with the node tool. We can also change the scale or width of the path with the node tool by using this purple diamond shaped handle. Okay, let's create a few more of these paths. Also, we're going to be cutting the outer paths, like this one, out of the skull later, so we don't have to worry about them going outside of the skull. Let's create a path up here too for eyebrows. But for this, we want both sides to be tapered, and that's what the ellipse shape option is for.
Let's create one of these over here as well. We can also double click one of these pads with the node tool to add another node. For the teeth, we can go back to the triangle in option and create paths coming up like this. Okay, next let's add some shading to the skull. For this, we can go back to using the pen tool with no shape option set. Now let's create a path through here. To create a sharp point here, before releasing the mouse, we can hold shift and bring the handle over here, then release. And again here. Let's bring it past the center line here, then down here. Now let's bring it back around the outside of the skull and close it off. Let's turn off the stroke and give it a gray fill. Now let's switch to the select tool and click this lower one step button up here a bunch of times until this path is under all of the black paths. Then let's select the skull and duplicate it with Control D. Hold Shift and select the gray path and go to Path, Intersection. And again, if we go to the node tool and move a node of this path, the mirrored path will reappear. Let's also create a shadow here above the eye. Let's use the pen tool with the ellipse shape option for this. Let's give it the same gray fill as the other shadow path. All right, before we can cut these outer paths out of the skull, we first have to finalize the mirror symmetry path effect or else it won't work correctly. To do this, we can switch to the select tool and select the background to get out of the skull group, select the group again and go to path, object to path. Now, if we open the path effects dialog again, we can see that the group no longer has the mirror symmetry effect attached to it. Now let's double click the group to enter it again. Select all of the outer black paths, including the ones for the teeth. Let's turn them into a single path by going to Path, Union. And we want to cut this path out of the skull and the main shadow path. So let's duplicate it with Ctrl D, then shift click the shadow path and go to Path, Difference. Now let's select the original path here and the skull and again go to Path Difference. Now if we change the color of the background, we can see that the paths have been cut out of the skull. We could also do this with the eyes and the nose if we wanted to, but I'll leave mine like it is. I will however select all of the eye paths here, and union them together with Control Plus. All right, we're finished with the skull for now, so let's work on the flame. First I'm going to get out of the skull group, then hold we'll shift and control and scale down the skull a bit. Now for the flame, let's switch to the pen tool and change shape back to none. Now let's click this button over here to use the spiral mode. This mode lets us create very smooth curves without having to click and drag. So we can click here, then here, and now we can create a very rounded curve. If you want to create a sharp point here, we can hold shift before we click, then we can normal click down here to go back to creating curves. I'll create another corner here. And here. Let's bring it back through here and close it off. For the color, let's first turn off the stroke. Then open the fill and stroke dialog with this button up here. Let's click this button in here to give it a linear gradient fill. Now let's switch to the gradient tool by pressing the G key. Select the stop on the left and move it to the top of the object. Let's give it a reddish fill. Now let's select this stop on the right. Hold control and move it to the bottom of the object. Raise the alpha channel all the way up and give it an orange fill.
Then we can press the page down key to put the flame below the skull group. We can also use the node tool to adjust the nodes and the curves will remain very smooth. Now let's use the pin tool to create another layer for the flame. Let's turn off the stroke and give this one a linear gradient fill as well. Let's use the gradient tool to move this stop up here. Let's make it orange. Now let's hold control and move this stop to the bottom. Raise the alpha channel up. Let's make it a lighter orange than the other stop. Then move it below the skull with page down. I'll adjust the node sum as well. Now let's create another layer with the pencil. Let's turn off the stroke. And we can just give this one a solid yellow fill. Then move it below the skull. Let's create one more layer. Turn off the stroke. Now just make this one white and lower the opacity a bit. Then put it below the skull. Okay, if we want, we can also cut off some of the flame around the skull so it's not quite touching it. To do this, let's first select the skull group and duplicate it with Ctrl D. Then let's ungroup the duplicate with Shift Ctrl G, turn it into a single path with Ctrl Plus, make it any color, and lower the opacity a bit. Now we want to outset this path. An easy way to do this is to go to Path, Dynamic Offset, then switch to the Node tool. Now we can use this handle up here to offset the path. Let's outset it about this much. Okay, now let's switch to the select tool and duplicate this. Shift click one of the flame paths and do a difference with control minus. Duplicate the dynamic offset object again. Shift click one of the other flame groups and do a difference. And again. For the last path, we don't need to create a duplicate. Alright, the last thing I'll do is create a crack coming down from the top of the skull. For this, I'll double click the skull group to enter it. Switch to the pen tool, put it back on Bezier mode, and change shape to triangle in, then create a path coming down like this. And I'll create another path here. Now I want to cut these paths out of the skull, so I'll select them both, do a union with Ctrl plus, shift click the skull, and do a difference with Ctrl minus. And that should do it for this lesson. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.